Hello friends, welcome to Brain Scoop channel. This is my new video and our today's topic is Intravenous Urography or Eye View. Eye View is a radiographic examination of urinary tract including the renal parenchyma, calluses and pelvis after intravenous injection of contrast media. Intravenous pilogram or IVP is an another type of eye view as it implies visualization of pelvis and calluses without parenchyma. The word pilogram is reserved for retrograde studies visualizing only the collecting system. There has been a decline in intravenous urogram done over the last 10 years. This is because of number 1. Development of newer imaging modalities like CT scan, ultrasound etc. Second is the cost containment and third is the adverse effects of contrast media. Let us go to some history of the eye view. Introduction of excretory urography was done in 1929 by American urologist Moses Swick. He injected an organically bound iodine compound into a vein, taking x-rays of the material cleared the body through the urinary tract. In 1937, Preger made several recommendations. The first one is the routine tomography, second high dose of contrast agents and urethral compressions. Indications why eye view is taken. The first one is the screening of entire urinary tract, especially in cases of hematuria or pyuria. The second one is the diseases of renal collecting systems and renal pelvises. The third one is differentiate function of both kidneys, abnormalities of ureter, obstructive uropathy tract, TB of the urinary tract, calculus disease, potential of renal donors. Surgery of urinary tract, suspected renal injury, and renal colic or flunk, plan, flunk pain. In children, there are some indications that is water abnormalities. Renal abnormalities as seen in 90% of patients. Malfunction of urinary tract, example polycystic diseases, PUJ obstructions, etc. Then, neurological disorders affecting the urinary tract. Malfunctions of genitalia like bilateral cryptochildism, then anorectal abnormalities or abnormalities, then enuresis in the presence of the bacteria, abnormally urinary sediment, history of recurrent urinary tract infection, and there are some contraindications in which eye view does not take place. There are no absolute contraindications, but there are some relative contraindications related to the eye view. The first one is the severe history of anaphylaxis previously carrier 30% risk, renal failure, hepatorenal syndrome, previous allergy to contrast agent and iodine, generalized allergic conditions, multiple myeloma, pregnancy, infancy, hyperthyroidism and diabetes. Overview of the urinary system. So, before knowing the process of the eye view, firstly we should know the overview of the urinary system. So, the urinary system consists of two kidneys, two ureters, one urinary bladder and one urethra as you can see in this diagram. After kidney filter the blood, they return most of the water and other soluter to the bloodstream. The remaining water or urine passes through the ureters and is stored in the urinary bladder. This is the gross anatomy of the kidney or the internal anatomy we can say. So the parenchyma of the kidney is divided into two major structures the superficial or the renal cortex and the deep or the renal medulla as you can see in this diagram. Grossly these structures take the shape of 8 to 18 cone shaped renal lobes each containing renal cortex surrounding a portion of medulla called the renal pyramid. They are the renal pyramids. Next, between the renal pyramids are projections of cortex called renal columns. Then there are columns, nephrons, the urine producing functional structure of kidneys span the cortex and medulla. The tip or papillae of each pyramid empties urine into minor calyx. So there are minor calyxes here and then the major calyxes. Minor calyxes empties into major calyxes and the major calyxes empty into the renal pelvis which becomes the ureter. 
here is the renal pelvis and it becomes the ureter function of the urinary system the first one is the kidney regulate blood volume and composition regulate ph produce two hormones and excrete waste products the ureters transport urine from kidney to urinary bladder then the urinary bladder store urine and expels through urethra and the urethra discharge urine from the body preparation before the ivu the patient should be well prepared before the ivu process so firstly we should ask for any history of diabetes mellitus renal diseases allergy to drugs and any specific foods there should be fasting for at least 4 hours or patient should be nil per olor for 6 hours do not dehydrate the patient bowel preparation because bowel the shadow of bowel can interfere with the images of i view so dulcolex is given 2 to 4 tablets at bed time for 2 days prior to the i view because colon should be empty for i view and take informed consent the procedure requirement the procedure obviously required some of the items which are as follows the equipment are 600 ma fluoroscopic guided x-ray unit abdominal compression equipment medium regular film screen combination in variety of sizes pads and immobilization aids especially in the cases of children intravenous administration equipment 50 ml syringe filling needle skin prep and sticky tape selection of needles venflon 19 gues tonicuet or blood pressure cuff and emergency drugs and equipments contrast media doses so in for the non ionic contrast media 300 mg per ml in for, that is 40 to 80 ml in adults and 240 mg i per ml below 7 kg 4 ml per kg and above 7 k above 7 kg there is 3 ml per kg then ionic contrast media 300 to 600 mg iod equivalent per kg body weight maximum of 40 grams of iodine and in children me glucomine iothalamate or di diatrizoate 60% containing equivalent of 280 mg i per ml of iodine dose is 1 to 2 ml per kg body weight modes of injection contrast media is usually given as a iv bolus injection within 60 to sorry 30 to 60 seconds the density of the nephrogram is directly proportional to the plasma concentration of the contrast media more iodine increases the density of the nephrogram large doses of contrast media increase diuresis which descends the collection system thus increasing the diagnostic information from the urogram so this is the mode of injection generally intravenous bolus given in 30 to given within 30 to 60 seconds and then the renal pelvis can be located with the help of the contrast procedure so patient is placed in supine position with pelvis at cathode side of the tube a support is placed under patient's knee to reduce lordotic curvature of the lumbosacral spine or provide comfort a scout film is taken including the kidneys ureter bladder and urethral regions on a large scale frame contrast media is injected intravenously into a prominent vein in the arm test injection of 1 ml of contrast is given and patient is observed for 1 minute to look for any contrast reactions then the rest of the contrast is rapidly injected within 30 to 60 seconds filming technique low kv high ma and short exposure should be used to get optimum image contrast so there are the standard films taken the first one is the plain x ray kuv or scout film then the 1 minute film then 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes 35 minutes and post void so let us talk about the plain x ray kuv or scout film the plain x ray kuv or scout film provides valuable information and sometimes indicates probable diagnosis it is useful in assessing calculus intestinal abnormalities intestinal gas pattern calcification abdominal mass and foreign body if any present it can also be used for the location of the ectopic kidneys and for the correct exposure factors 
so this is the plain ivp one minute film shows the nephrogram the radiograph is often omitted as the renal outlines are usually adequately visualized on five minute film the five minute film shows the nephrogram renal pelvis and upper part of ureter after five minutes compression band is now applied on patient's abdomen and the balloon is positioned on anterior superior iliac spine asis where cross the pelvis brim there is no there is this is to produce better pelvic additional distension so this is the 3 minute ivp showing the upper part of the renal pelvis and the nephrogram and this is the 5 minute ivp compression are contraindicated in some cases the first one is the renal trauma large abdominal mass abdominal aneurysm and after abdominal surgery if 5 minute film shows dilated calluses or if calluses or pelvis are not adequately obsessified obstruction exists and compression band not be applied if compression band is applied a film is taken after 10 minutes the film should show central kidneys to demonstrate distended collecting systems and proximal ureter then the 15 minutes film visualization of ureter is better in prone position as if as the fill better this position reverses curve of the inferior course of the ureters making it anti dependent in is to gravity another method to see ureter is modified tenderlenburg technique with 15 to 20 degrees head low tilt with the, the patient supine next the 30 minutes film is taken it gives complete overview of the urinary tract kidneys ureters bladder bladder distension can be evaluated this is the 15 minutes ivp and the 30 minutes ivp next the post void film taken immediately after voiding it is used to assess for residual urine bladder mucosal lesion diverticular bladder tumor outlet obstruction vua all films are taken expiry praise only so this is the ivp of uh, post void Spe there are certain times where special films in ivu are taken the first one is this oblique view to project the ureter away to supine and to separate the overlying radio opaque shadows mimicking calculi second oblique films are also used for the visualization of posterior lateral aspects of bladder and for doubtful urethral masses the second one is the erect film provoke emptying of the urinary bladder and then demonstrate layering of calculi in cyst and abscesses detect urinary tract gas not seen in other films have optimum demonstration of renal ptosis bladder hernia systole and areas of obstruction in ureter and prone film viewing of urethral areas not seen in supine films demonstration of renal ptosis and bladder hernia so this is the prone film complications due to contrast there are something there are something known as minor reactions immediate reactions and uh, see severe reactions so the first one is the minor reaction that is nausea vomiting mild rash light head ache and mild dysponia then intermediate reactions are extensive urticaria facial oedema bronchospasm laryngeal oedema dys dysponia and hypotension then there are severe reactions which is 0.05% that is circulatory collapse pulmonary edema severe angina myocardial infarction convulsions coma cardiac and respiratory arrest due to technique there are upper arm or shoulder pain and extra position of contrast at the injection site there after care observation for 6 hours the patient should be observed for 6 hours after the ivp or iview watch for later contrast reactions the patient should be prevented from being dehydrated in high risk patient renal function test should be done to watch for deteriorations then there are certain advantages of iview that is clear outline of the entire urinary system so can see even mild hydronephrosis 
easier to pick out obstructing stone when there are multiple pelvic calcifications third can show non opaque stones as filling defects fourth one is the demonstrate renal failure and allow for verification that the opposite kidney is functioning normally then there are certain disadvantages the first one is the need for iv contrast material it may provoke an allergic response multiple delayed films can take hours as contrast passes quite slowly into the blocked renal unit and ureter may not have sufficient opacification to determine the anatomy and point of obstruction requires a significant amount of radiation exposure and may not be ideal for young children or pregnant women this is all for today if you like my video please like comment and share and do subscribe my youtube channel for further updates thank you